Hello everyone, my name is Val and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we will look into the six thinking hats approach, uh, discuss the fundamental principles behind this technique and examine how we could apply it to a language classroom. Please stay tuned. What is your approach to decision making? What do you see when you look at this picture? Is your glass half full or is your glass half empty? If you are naturally optimistic, then chances are you don't always consider the potential downsides to a decision. Uh, similarly, if you are very cautious, if you are very careful, you might not focus on opportunities that could um, open up. Usually we go with the gut feeling. We usually we go with uh, what the heart tells us. But as a rule, the best decisions usually come after you've explored several ways of viewing a problem. Six thinking hats is a way of looking at an issue or a problem uh, from a variety of different perspectives. It can be used by um, individuals, it can be used by a group of people to think outside the box, uh, to try out different approaches and to find a good way to move forward to solve a problem or to find a solution to a problem. The Six Thinking Hats approach was created by Edward de Bono, a Maltese physician, psychologist, inventor, author and philosopher. In 1985, he published a book uh, of the same name uh, where he presented the Six Thinking Hats technique as a way to understand and explore different types of thinking. Here's a quick fact. Edward de Bono was born in Malta, a small island country in the European Union located between Sicily and Libya, if I remember it correctly. In Malta, people speak uh, three languages, Maltese, uh, English and Italian. And Maltese is actually a quite interesting language. It's a cross between Arabic and Italian. It's a very beautiful country. In his book, uh, Dr. De Bono talks a lot about ideas and he also talks a lot about being right. You know, one of my favorite quotes from the book is this. The need to be right all the time is the biggest bar to new ideas. It is better to have enough ideas for some of them to be wrong than to be always right by having no ideas at all. And there is something with us, with people, with our urge to always want to be right. We want to be right. We like to be right. We have this strange feeling of satisfaction when we are right. You know, um, do, do you sometimes feel that you'd rather be right than at peace, you know? Whereas maybe I feel that I'd rather be at peace than to be right. I don't want to be right all the time. I don't want to argue with people. I don't want to see who is right and who's wrong. I just want to be at peace. And you know, we all have lots of ideas. Sometimes we, you know, we come to our supervisors, administrators, bosses, managers, and we say, oh, I have an idea and uh, we kind of spill it all out. But at the end of the day, it's just an idea. It's something that has no base beneath it. 
So Dr. De Bono also mentions this in his book. He says that an idea that is developed and put into action is way more important than um, an idea that only exists exists as an idea. And I think that's um, quite a good thought, if you ask me. I think now is a good time to get a bit more practical and dive into the six thinking hats approach. Here is what each of the six thinking hats represents. Blue hat. Blue hat is the captain's hat. Uh, it's the leader's hat. Um, if you're wearing a blue hat, it means you are uh, the captain of your team. You are the leader. You're in control. Uh, you manage the team. Yeah. Well, you have an agenda. You have a plan. Uh, you uh, distribute the tasks. And basically, as I said before, you are in control. Green hat is the creative hat. Uh, it represents creative thinking. When you are wearing uh, this hat, you explore all kinds of ideas um, and possible ways to find a solution to the problem or possible ways to move forward. Um, red hat. Um, this hat represents feelings and instincts. When you are wearing this hat, you can let yourself go free. You can express all kinds of ideas, all kinds of uh, feelings without pretty much controlling yourself. Hmm. Uh, the next hat is the yellow hat or the um, optimist's hat. Uh, when you're wearing this hat, um, you're trying, you, you try to be as optimistic as possible. You need to focus on the benefits and the added value that could come from your ideas. The black hat is the uh, pessimist hat. So uh, when you're wearing this hat, uh, um, you need to assess risks, yeah? You need to be critical, right? And um, it's not enough just to be critical. You need to explain why you're critical. You need to be able to justify your concerns. Um, okay, and uh, the final hat, the, the white hat, it's the facts. Um, it means information gathering. When you're wearing this hat, it means you are collecting information, you're sharing information. It's all about the knowledge that you already have. Now, you may say, Val, it's all very interesting, but we are teachers. How can we apply this approach, this technique, to a language classroom? And I'm going to tell you right now how we can do it. Tell your students that you are going to do a group activity called the six thinking hats. Then tell them that each hat represents a mode of thinking to help them see the world differently. Then explain the activity you are going to do. First, ask them to form a group of six students. Then tell them that in their groups, they're going to use the six hat to discuss a product. It can be any product they want, anything they want at all. Uh, they can tell other groups what their product is because other groups will have to guess. And everyone in the group will have to speak. Now it's a good time to explain what these uh, thinking hats represent. So you show the slide to the student and you say that the white hat is the facts. It's things you already know. So uh, when a person wears this hat, this person needs to write down everything he or she knows about the product. 
The red hat is the feelings. It asks the question, how does it make you feel? And here, the person who is wearing this hat needs to write down uh, or list uh, everything how uh, he or she feels about the product. The next hat is the yellow hat, which is everything that's positive about this product. Good things about the topic, yeah? So you list everything what's good about it. The next hat, the black one, is the negative hat. So here you write everything what makes you sad, upset, uh, or make you feel bad about the product. The next one is the green hat, new ideas. How do we make it better? What can we do to make it better? And finally, uh, the blue hat is your topic. So uh, the person who wears this hat in the group is the leader, is the captain of the group. So this person is the one who can assign uh, the hats to other students. But of course, they need to discuss so they feel comfortable with the role they're playing. Yeah, but the blue hat is in charge of that small group and uh, the, the, the blue hat monitors the time, makes sure everybody works um, well. So um, the blue hat needs to be a student with good organizational skills, right? And uh, also when you do this activity, the blue hat can ask the question, what is your topic? And when you do presentations, again, the blue hat uh, asks the questions. Also, the blue hat finds a way, a creative way to do the presentations. Here's a possible presentation mode. Of course, you let the blue hat, the leader uh, in each group, to arrange their presentations in any way they want. But uh, one of the possible ways of doing it is to ask um, students to line up in front of the blackboard and go one by one. But again, and I repeat it, the blue hat, the leader, the captain of each group uh, can do it in any way or form he or she wants. So let's say, let's take a, let's take a look at this example. So the first student, the white hat may say, it is food, it is tasty, it has many toppings. The red hat says, I feel happy, excited, and ecstatic. This is how it makes me feel. The yellow hat may say, it fills my belly, it gives me energy, it makes me feel good. The black hat may say, it is unhealthy, it makes me fat, and sometimes it can be quite expensive. Next student, the green hat. Uh, so this student may say, well, to make it better, we need to pick the right meat. We need to use fresh vegetables and maybe we need to make our own sauce. And then the blue hat, the leader, asks the whole class, what's the topic? What is it? And hopefully by now the whole class know what it is. So they are going to shout, it is a burger. <laughs> and now you can invite the next group to do the same. They can be as creative as possible and hopefully the leaders, the captains, the blue hats can come up with different ways to present um, their product. I hope you enjoyed this video and maybe learned a thing or two. If you like what I do, please subscribe to my channel, leave a like and hit that bell icon to turn the notifications on so you never miss a single upload. Have a great day and I will see you in my next video. Bye everyone!